One should always uh, invite John Cabot Zinn to give people a guided meditation before they speak, I think. That just gets everybody into the right state. All right, so I'm delighted to be here today on this day of mind training. And specifically, I'm going to talk about an aspect of mind training that I think we've really just begun to tap into, and that is training our mindsets, training our beliefs. But before I get into that, I want to tell you the story of Leo. Uh, so this is Leo. When I met Leo, he was struggling with a food allergy. He was particularly allergic to peanuts. Now, food allergies don't seem like that big of a deal, but if you have a child or you have a food allergy, those of you know, food aller allergies can be particularly ridden with anxiety because even the slightest exposure can lead to anaphylaxis or even death in some cases. So fortunately for Leo, there are good treatments that exist. So oral immunotherapy is a treatment. It takes about six or seven months, and it's a process through which you take small, teeny tiny, but gradually increasing doses of the thing you're allergic to. And over time, that builds up tolerance to peanuts. So this treatment works. It works very well. The problem with the treatment is it's particularly unpleasant to go through. So as you're taking these small but increasing doses of the thing you were formerly deathly allergic to, your body is responding with symptoms. And people experience a lot of unpleasant symptoms like uh, rash, hives, upset stomach, and so forth. And when I talked to doc Dr. Nado, who was the head of the Stanford Allergy Center at the time, uh, she said that this was her number one problem. They had good treatments, but kids weren't going to take it, or they were dropping out in droves. So what we wanted to do at the Mind and Body Lab was to investigate and look into this problem and see if we could help fix it. So first we looked at what they were telling their patients about these side effects. And what we found is that they were informing the kids and their parents that side effects were likely uh, during this treatment. But in order to get the benefits of them, they just needed to hang in there and endure those side effects. So that seems reasonable, right? We have to disclose our patients of side effects. But if you think about it, what that information does is it kind of leaves them in this air of uncertainty over the meaning of those side effects. So if you're going through this treatment or your child is going through this treatment, you hope it's going to work, but then they start getting side effects, what do you think that means? You might worry. Maybe this is a sign that the treatment isn't working or the treatment is harmful. Or maybe this is a sign that uh, your body is not capable of going through this treatment or you're particularly allergic, it's not going to work for you. So you can see leaving them in the void uh, invites them to adopt beliefs or mindsets about the meaning of side effects that might be more or less adaptive. What we also found when we were investigating was that the true reality of the side effects was actually not so negative. In fact, much like soreness when you're working out in order to build your muscles stronger, these symptoms were a sign, a signal, that the body was toughening that it was building up uh, immunity, a tolerance to what they were formerly allergic to. What we also found was that this more positive message that is embedded in the mechanisms of oral immunotherapy was not getting across to the patients at all. So we wanted to test what would be the effect of putting kids into one or the other of these mindsets, either that it's you know, just a side effect you would need to endure, or that side effects are a sign that the treatment is working and your body is getting stronger. So in this trial, we randomized 50 kids and their parents to one or the other of these messages. We told this verbally. Uh, we also uh, did it in the form of pamphlets, which explained, and in both cases, they were warned about side effects. They were given supportive um, resources to help cope with the side effects, but the meaning differed. And you can see this simple change in mindsets about side effects changes the whole game. It changes the whole experience. Now when you see your child going through having the symptom or you're having the symptom, you might feel like, it's OK. This is part of the process. My body is getting stronger. This treatment is working. 
So what we did about six months into treatment, this is a seven month, uh, give or take, treatment, is we asked them to explain the meaning of symptoms to a future kid who was going through this uh, treatment. So this is what Jim Quick referred to as an explanation effect. We did it to check in on them, but also to have them reinforce this message. So here's a kid in our symptoms as, as uh, side effects condition. And so what advice would you give to future kids who are gonna go through this treatment who might be worried about their symptoms? Advice to future kids would probably be just to follow the procedures that you tell them and also, you know, just hang in there. Okay, so it's not totally negative, right? Just hang in there. But contrast that with Leo, who was randomized into our positive signals condition. So what advice would you give for future kids who are going to go through this treatment who might be feeling kind of afraid that they're going to have symptoms? How would you tell them to think about their symptoms? Uh when you have a symptom, and it is actually meaning that your body is fighting off peanuts. I love this kid. He actually goes into the epigenetic explanation for why that occurs that he learned from Dr. Nato. But you can see, right, just totally different mindsets. So what did it matter? What we found when we looked at them throughout this treatment was that those who had the positive signals mindset had significant reductions in their anxiety. This was true for the kids. It was also true for the parents. We found a significant reduction in symptoms, not at the beginning, but when the doses were getting largest, when they were moving to being out of treatment, they had fewer negative symptoms. We found that the kids and their parents contacted their health providers less with concerns about treatment and economic outcome. And we also found that the treatment worked better for kids in this treatment. So when they viewed uh, symptoms as positive signals, the treatment was threefold more uh, effective as measured by IgG4 levels, which is an immune marker of allergic tolerance. So you might be wondering how did this you know, seemingly simple mindset actually change their body's response to the treatment? That seems strange. But in fact, if you understand placebo response and the mind-body connection, you realize that it's really not that surprising at all. So when we think about placebo effects, we often think about them in the context of the randomized control trial. This context in which the whole goal is to overcome, outperform, a placebo effect. Now this design is great. Uh, it's a great standard for testing the efficacy of a drug. But what it obscures and what we often forget is that in the reality of medicine, the practice of medicine, our everyday experience of health and healthcare, the placebo effect does not disappear. It remains actively involved. It's the scaffolding on which the total effect of the treatment is placed. And when you realize this, you realize we need to ask more sophisticated questions, not just is there a placebo or a placebo effect, but what is it and what can we do to leverage it? So we know placebo effects, of course, um, you know, the size and strength differs. It's like 80, 90% in anti uh, antidepressants. It's lower in other conditions, but it's still there. In like antibiotics, it's about 10, 15%. So what is it? So we essentially think it can be, it can be distilled into three things. First, there's the body's natural abilities to heal itself with time. That alone should not be discounted. But second, there are our mindsets, our beliefs, our expectations. Those can influence our healing response by activating, triggering those natural systems in the body. And of course, our mindsets don't come out of nowhere. They're shaped by the words a doctor says to you, the cultures in which we're embedded, the media we're exposed to. Elements of the social context shape our mindsets, which activate the total healing properties. And when we understand these forces that drive placebo-like effects, we can also see it's really not about the pill or procedure, and in fact, it's not just medicine. In our lab, we've shown that these forces play a role in shaping the benefits of um, things like exercise. So the benefits of exercise are also what you believe or expect about the benefits of exercise. 
Uh, we've looked at genetics, so your genetic predispositions can be shaped by your beliefs about your genetic predispositions, uh, your stress, beliefs about stress, and so forth. So what we're really focused on now is two critical questions. If we get this, we want to know more specifically which mindsets matter. Like, should you just think positive, or is there a specific belief or mindset? Should you think and expect you won't have any symptoms? Or should you think differently about the meaning of those symptoms? We need to get more sophisticated about the psychology of our beliefs, what works and what doesn't. And then second, we need to, under, we need to understand how do we better intervene consciously and deliberately to elevate, activate, optimize, embrace those mindsets to improve health and human performance. So in our lab, we've explored lots of different mindsets. We've done this in the food uh, space, the stress space, the exercise space. In the healthcare space, we've uncovered um, mindsets that we think are really important. So you have mindsets about the treatment. Do you think it's going to work or not, and what the meanings of symptoms are? We have mindsets about illness. If you get diagnosed with cancer, do you view it as a catastrophe, as manageable, as an opportunity? You have mindsets about your body. Do you think your body is capable, or do you think it's working against you? And of course, you have mindsets about the people caring for you. Are they competent? Do they get it? And are they warm? Do they get you? So these mindsets matter. They're not necessarily true or false, right or wrong. In many ways, they're subjective. But they matter in the sense that they shape how we uh, respond to the environment, how we behave, and even what our bodies prioritize and prepare to do. So once we recognize these mindsets, we need to uh, harness them, leverage them. And I think there's two routes to doing that. One is we can embed better mindsets into our uh, materials. In the healthcare space, you saw this with Leo, right? We just changed the pamphlet. We changed what people said to them. We've done this with vaccinations. We've done this with healthy foods. We've done this with messaging about stress. But far more important, far more exciting, and I think what you all are here to do today, is to figure out how we can better empower people to be aware of and then consciously change their mindsets for their own benefit. So we've started to develop programs uh, like this in uh, domains of cancer, uh, stress, healthy eating, and so forth. So I'll leave you with this note, uh, and that is we've done so much in society, but we've really, really failed so far to fully tap into medicine's most complex and powerful structure, and that is, of course, the human mind. I think meditation, mindfulness, is the fundamental foundation. But once we have that, then we want to know, like, what do we program our mind with once we're aware? So I'll leave you with that and look forward to conversing further with you throughout the day. Thank you.